I need to get some seeds from inside the house. I'm gonna kind of give you a rundown of what's going on out there in here where it's a little quieter. What we are doing today is preparing the rest of our in-ground garden space. I am a big advocate of not tilling. Whenever I read and watch Charles Doubting stuff, whenever I've studied Ruth Stout's method, Back to Eden Gardening, the thing that all of those have in common is not breaking up the ground and cultivating the ground every year, but instead adding on top of the soil, um, amending and allowing that soil structure to build itself and grow. Uh, you will notice at the beginning of this video, there was a quick look at the fact that we're doing some tilling today. So you may be asking, why would you do that? This is the first time we've ever run a tiller on the back of a tractor. Ben Turn brought his dad's small tractor and tiller for us to use today. And the, the real reason why we're saying, okay, we're gonna go ahead and do this is because we want to expand in some gardening spaces that we did not prepare for this year. The, one of the things with not tilling and doing no-till spaces, a lot of times, there's kind of some legwork on the front end in preparing those spaces. Uh, the year before or at least a few months before and we didn't do that and we want to garden those the other thing is i want to be a student of growing food that i hope that i'm always in a place of continuing to learn new things the way that i learn is by trying different things and i've not done very much in the ground tilled gardening. One of the spaces that we tilled today is for sweet potatoes, which we're gonna be digging those up anyway. It's kind of hard to do like a true no-till method with sweet potatoes. Now Ruth Stout's method is building up on top of the soil with hay, so that can be no-till, but you still have to dig dig the tubers out. And so we went ahead and tilled that spot and we're going to uh, add some soil on top of that, mulch that, and grow our sweet potatoes in that way. The other area, we are going ahead and tilling that, and then on top of that, adding in some layers of compost and then mulch. I'm trying to find my way of doing things, and for me, that means trying other ways of doing things, reading lots of people's ways of doing things, and then learning by trial and error what works for me, what doesn't. Because if I have a, a way, if I have my own method, I want to be able to tell you why. I think that that's important. And so right now, I'm kind of letting you guys in on a little bit of my own trial and error. And that means we're tilling this space in the back by the greenhouse. And it's really exciting. It's exciting to grow a garden. Right now I just came inside. Um, I've got some white Dixie butter peas. I am, I've got to look through a couple other boxes that I have of seeds. But also this is for my other part of the in-ground garden, which is no-till, which we built up on the ground. And I'm gonna plant a couple more summer squashes in there, like this, this green and white patty pan, and this uh, custard squash, which is kind of similar to a patty pan. I've also grabbed more winter squash, including this Waltham butternut, buttercup, sweet meat, and New England sugar pie. And these are all gonna be planted back there in the back garden areas. I want to exponentially increase the amount of food that we are producing without equally exponentially increasing the amount of work of preserving said food. So I'm doing a lot more tomatoes in the greenhouse, but where I have my few rows of heirlooms and cherries up in my garden, I'm doing more kind of production in mine in the greenhouse, doing some heirloom varieties, uh, but growing a lot of the same thing. And basically trying to grow some things that grow a little more uniform, and I'll share more about that whenever we get those all planted and tell you about what I'm putting in. But my idea is I wanna simplify harvesting and processing those tomatoes. And it is just a little simpler to harvest and process when you have lots of the same shape and size tomatoes. I'm not giving up my rows of mixed heirlooms, but since I am increasing the amount that I'm producing, I don't wanna increase the work by doing it exactly the same, if that makes sense. With what I'm putting in the ground back here, the reason I'm choosing melons and winter squash 
is because there's not processing work involved with those. Like the winter squash, I will store, uh, we're gonna work out an area in our basement and kind of like make up a, a mock root cellar out of it. That, that way we are able to produce more volume of food without producing the equal amount of work. Like if I use that space and grew even more things like tomatoes that are quickly perishable, those are gonna have to be canned or frozen, preserved in some way. And so planting more of that is making a lot more work later, whereas planting more winter squash is not. And that's what I'm considering in all of this expansion because truly preserving your garden is very, very labor intensive. Being able to can things, just dehydrating, being able to cut everything up, it just takes time, which there's a certain amount of time I'm happy to do that. It's totally worth it, but everybody has limitations and I have to keep that in mind whenever we're doing all of this expansion in once or else we're gonna be wasting food here in a few months. Well, our plans just changed a little bit because uh, we have another beehive swarm. Oh yeah, definitely swarming. Maya and Ben turn just ran inside to suit up. Uh, Maya was grabbing some lemongrass oil which is used to catch swarms. Bees are very, very attracted to lemongrass oil and so that's like a pretty universal uh, beekeeping tip to use lemongrass oil to catch swarms. And he went to grab a box. I walked out here to grab some things out of the greenhouse because I've got Everything I need to take to the back to plant that. I've got my, uh, these garden markers, which I'm gonna write with, and then the seeds I just got from the basement, as well as some that I grabbed out of the greenhouse here, like some sunflowers, because I'm gonna plant some of those back there. So I'm standing out here keeping an eye on them to see where they go while the guys are getting ready to catch them. Hopefully they land low and stay here like close by on our property. This is so surreal, very, very exhilarating um, to experience. Thankfully, we've been home and have been able to catch this. Now, basically, I, I'll let Maya explain it. Uh, we kind of got some conflicting information on whether we should try to split the hive that was remaining after the last swarm or leave it because the queen was virgin. And we decided to wait and leave it and they're swarming again. This is so surreal to watch. It is just absolutely crazy. So many bees. It's like they're settling in really low right here. Are you filming this? You kind of look like a weirdo right now. Like, <laughs> our friend Kaylee said they do. Maya called our friend Kaylee from the Honeystead. She's been posting multiple videos lately about swarms as well. We have a couple of great friends who are YouTubers that do beekeeping. Um, the Honeystead and Ben from VW Family Farm. Uh, those are kind of two people that we call often and we have some local friends who are kind of bee mentors to us. Uh, we are very new at this, so we're showing you what to do, but if you're looking for like how-to information, definitely go check out the channels, the people who have been doing this for very long because we're learning as we go here. Some are lower and some are up high. Yeah, the majority are on that lower branch. You wanna get some close up shots? Well, this one feels way more manageable. That's actually six feet off the ground, like Ben Vinson said, rather than 30. Being that I'm a uh, B professional now, apparently, not really. Uh, we should be able to capture these pretty easily. I'm feeling good about this one. Okay, most of the bees have settled. So we're gonna try and just shake the branch into this box and then dump that into the hive and put the lid on it and then we'll wait and see if we've got the queen. I'm okay. Actually, you know what? We could try, because I'm taller than you. Yeah, if you'll hit that, I think we'll... Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, I had to set the camera down. So, I, I shook the branch and got what, 80% of the bees off? Yeah, quite a few. So what we're gonna do, so honestly, this is so close, I could probably, I'm just gonna watch. See the fanning right there? See, they're all fanning away. That's telling the bees that the queen's in here. So I think we actually got her. They said if they were fanning to the hive, then they would be opposite, she's not here. So we're just gonna wait and find out. 
All right, and for your guys' viewing pleasure, the peanut gallery. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, Jess, here's the camera back. You kind of want to see it up close? No, you can zoom right, in on your phone. Oh. Yeah, I know. I don't have my phone on me. Right what do y'all okay, think? Go get it. No, I it's uh, pretty neat. I, mean, I found it twice, and only in probably like a week. I'm fairly confident that she's in there because of the way the bees are fanning away from the hive. But there's still the cluster of the bees that we missed when we knocked them down. I think we're gonna try and knock those in and dump them into the into the hive. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. Take the lid off. We were successful in catching that second swarm. Let me turn the camera around and I'll show you the branch that they were on. So they were all swarmed up here. And as you can see, they're, they're obviously not still there um, because the queen is for sure in here now. Y'all can see that all the bees are in there. Well, we just added another beehive. That makes the total count up to four which is one more than we had when we started. I've been talking with uh, the Honeystead, and I'm also gonna call and talk to Ben Vinson at VW Family Farm to get his opinion. And then I'll basically, what I do is I like to get opinions from people who are doing it and are more experienced than me, and then I make my own decision on what I'm gonna do moving forward. Sitting in the garden right now is the swarm from last week, the pink hive I got from Ben Vinson last year, the white one right there is the bottom box of the double deep hive that swarmed twice. That one right in between these two, see green, white, blue. That one right there is the one I just split off the top and made sure it had queen cells. So that's four. And right out there in the woods, that is the deep that I caught that swarm in this afternoon. Five hives. You can see I've still got bees just flying all around my head right now, which is why I'm still in this contraption. Um, I'm going to go to the garage and let them calm down and get out of this suit. One other thing I did want to address, uh, a lot of advice that we've gotten online from uh, viewers and different Instagram people is they thought that maybe the location of the bees was causing a problem. And that may be the case. Um, I may be contributing to it. I don't think that's the only factor. But either way, I wanted to give you guys an update on where we're planning on moving the bees. We actually have already decided to move the hives out of the garden and into a better location. And I've kind of picked my spot. I've kind of come up with the design of the area that I want to do. I've definitely done some reading and gotten some advice and I think I've settled in on what it's going to be and where it's going to be. So let me just show you real quick where I'm planning on moving our new bee operation to. And honestly, I'm gonna to have to do it pretty soon because we can't fit five hives in that area of the garden for sure. So just right in here, I'm going to level it out with some landscaping timbers. I'm going to put down some fabric to kill all the grass and just around the beehives, we're gonna do that so we don't have to weed eat around them. Last year, weed eating around the beehives was very hazardous because they don't like it. So we won't have to weed eat around the, weed, around the beehives this year. Um, and now I'm gonna kind of fill it with some gravel just so I have somewhere to stand that's not wet and muddy. Another suggestion that a friend of ours who does bees made is he suggested putting in a windbreak around the hives. And I like that idea for multiple reasons. Um, so we're actually gonna do a uh, privacy fence in like an L shape right here and then we'll keep the bees in front of that. I'm also going to build on there some frame holders which will essentially be like racks that are spaced wide enough to hold frames. That way when I'm doing hive inspections, I can pull the frames out, inspect it, and then set it up there. I look forward to taking you guys on the journey as I become a better beekeeper. Well, Maya has returned the camera to me. Oh my goodness. After taking you guys on a bee adventure for the day. Um, I shared this last time when the first swarm happened that when you're doing a homestead, you just, you never really know. Um, when there are critters involved, you just, you just, your, your plans may have to change for the day. I was productive today though. While he was taking care of the swarm and getting some video of that, I put these sweet potato slips in. This is my first year growing a large amount of sweet potatoes. I've not done this before, but 
like I said, we are focusing on expanding where we can get a large return without an exponential amount of work. And sweet potatoes, potatoes, they're a fairly low maintenance way to grow a large volume of food. I haven't done this though, and I did a lot of research. I watched a really good video um, from Self-Sufficient Me down in Australia. Now, he is in a warmer growing zone than I am, but it is somewhat similar. And I also watched several videos from Danny and Wanda over at Deep South Homestead. I'll link all this stuff down below. We did till this ground, we mounded up hills, we added a little bit of super soil to the top of the soil. I wasn't trying to amend a lot because um, I don't really think that you're supposed to do that necessarily for sweet potatoes. I think they're pretty forgiving of, you know, poor soils. I did put a little bit of compost down on top of this just to kind of help seal in the moisture because our soil is kind of on the clayish side and having this compost on top will help the soil stay a little looser. And I just planted the slips really, really deeply, which is what Danny does. And he uses this little forked stick thing and I'll link the video so you can see it. But I kind of improvised and got a poker that I could push the slips down in really deep. And it went really quickly. I was kind of able to just <laughs> straddle these uh, rows and duck walk down and, and poke my slips down, which means that you probably wish I had made a video because it was pretty silly looking. <laughs> now I didn't have enough slips to do that row but I have those purple potatoes in the house that I got from Whole Foods that I'm growing slips off of oh, and that man. I want to put on that row. These sweet potato slips I got from Stark Bros. Um, I'm not 100% sure what their stock on those is now. I ordered them a while ago. Uh, these are the Beauregard that's southern. <laughs> These are the, the Beauregard <laughs> slips and sweet potatoes. They're all the same. All three rows here that I did plant. There's a few down on the end. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I have these really dark purple sweet potatoes too that I bought from Whole Foods and I really liked them. They were just a little on the expensive side so I went back and got a few more and left them to sprout uh, to see if they would because I was like, eh, I don't want to have to keep paying for these. I want to grow them. Pretty legit, Maya. I am feeling like legit in many areas of our life. Right now. <laughs> We are legit potato farmers. Legit. We are legit. Sweet. Well. Well, let's not say that yet. <laughs> They're not like these could all die. We'd be like, well, scratch that. We're getting pretty good. I don't think they will. From everything I read, there, I did a good job. And I'm feeling pretty good about beekeeping. Yeah. Two swarms caught. The other day, I was like, so are you gonna like totally do a bee math thing, like chicken math, and end up with a whole bunch of hives? He's like, oh no, I'm totally gonna control myself and and so should show some restraint. I'm gonna keep it at four hives for at least the next year. Like four days later, we now have five beehives. <laughs> and honestly, if they swarm tomorrow, I catch them again. I want all the bees. All the bees. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with us today on our many adventures. We bless y'all. Until next time.